thank you for coming to my channel and i want to acknowledge that currently where i'm at i am inhabiting lands from the dakota and anishinaabeg people and i just wanted to take some time and acknowledge that and also remind you that you probably are on stolen land if you're anywhere in the americas you're on stolen land and definitely do that research about who were the original people on your land and really take time and acknowledge that and what has happened and where we are now and how much further we need to go let's get back into the video all right we're not gonna show up with chap lips here in in vicarious remark i want nobody coming for me but you never know hello welcome to my youtube channel i'm trying to figure out a way to only use natural light and see if that really enhanced the of my YouTube videos. Today we are talking about this lovely book here, The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. If you're not familiar with W.E.B. Du Bois, I suggest that you become familiar with him. You know, this is Black History Month, nor do I have the energy right now to inform y'all, educate y'all on W.E.B. Du Bois. For picture reference, this is him. And this is the author of this book. And if you want to, you know, get some reading on, I suggest you read The Souls of Black Folks by W.E.B. Du Bois to kind of, you know, catch you up on your reading goals. All right, y'all. So here we go. We're going to talk about the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. And to be honest, this would be a very long video and I decided to make it shorter by talking about like my favorite moments in the book but I will give you just like a brief non-spoiler review of the book. So the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois follows the generations of one family and it goes back and forth in time. So this is a family who first started out, you follow their lineage from when they were first mixed with indigenous folks, the Creek people. And you follow this woman and this man, I think the man's name is Coromante and his love interest, I would say. She is an indigenous woman and she is Creek. And in the book, she's referred to woman of the wind which I think is beautiful, but there are so many parts in the front part of the book that I really enjoyed, which is how Coromente and the Woman of the Wind came together and what that meant to them and how they became a couple of sorts. This is in the area before slavery was legal. You're following this story of how this black person or this enslaved person and this indigenous woman have come to be and how the Creek people have adopted Coromante into their family, into their beliefs, into their system. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. Then as you continue to read this book, you follow the lineage of Coromante and Woman of the Wind. One of my favorite parts of this book is that it's written in different point of views. And a lot of the things that was mentioned in this book to me was not new things to learn about black people as a black person, but it was also a beautiful story. Point of views that I enjoyed the most was Aisley, who is a young girl who is probably the youngest descendant that is talked about in this book. Also, her sisters are of note as well, and her mom, Belle, as well. And who else would I say is like my favorite point of views? I would just say Belle first and then Aisley. Aisley mouth, y'all, wicked. She was coming for you. If you even tried to even think about coming for her, her mom was just, I just loved all her sayings and everything that she said. The hard part of this book is that it contains a lot of sexual violence, sexual trauma, rape of learning about how black folks and white folks mingled. And I'm, I'm using that word mingled very lightly um, because I don't want to cause secondhand harm to anyone who's watching this video. 
while you're reading this book, you are just really attached to the story and the families in this book. I will say there was a character named Samuel that I want you to be very cautious about when you read his chapters. His chapters start off with the monsters and if you want to skip that chapter I think that would be okay and you will get hints to like what he's done throughout the book. Um, but in short he is a white male ancestor who is uh, raping folks, uh, to put lightly. And I hope that's not a spoiler, but that is something that I wish that I knew before reading this book because it is a lot. There was a lot of that in this book. It's not like it's one chapter or two chapters. It's a couple chapters and it's on page. So just so you are aware of that before you just dive into this. But I do think that it is a must read. I think they also did a really good job with connecting each character to each other and also creating a space for you the reader to be more reflective on how things have come to be and what it means to be in a blended family and by blended I mean like the descendants of these two people also are different kind of black folks and when I say different kind of black folks I'm talking about colorism you have some who are very light skin you have some of what they call in here white passing we have some who are high yellow we have some who are my skin complexion we have some who are darker than me so watching how colorism plays in this story is very interesting and I will say another part that I really loved about this is how the women the black women in this book was like no I'm gonna make a way for myself I'm going to choose education I'm gonna choose me and I'm gonna fight for what I believe in which I thought was very you know heartwarming and remind me of the women in my family and the women who raised me so that was a great reminder to help me get some things in order that I'm doing that is not on camera. I also want to mention that I hybrid read this book or blended read this book. I read it here and I also listened to it as well. And let me tell you, this is not, this ain't a short baby. This baby thick. Look at them thighs. She thick. So this is over 800 pages of reading. So definitely, you know, get into it. I, if I had to do it again, I don't think I would have read it as fast as I did. I would definitely taken my time. I really didn't have a choice because I wasn't going to pay for the audiobook and also the physical copy. And I wanted to read them both at the same time. I only have five days left on my Libby. So I was like, girl, you just got to dive in and read it because you were procrastinating clearly on the other times, right? So that's what I had to do. So now that I finished the review of this book or just a very light review of this book, I also wanna talk about the things that I thought were black AF. All right, so let's first talk about, I was like, why, why am I on the side? Like there's something right here, there's nothing right here. There's there's nothing right there. It's it's okay. You'll be okay. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize I had a little fuss on the forehead. All right. Well, look, it's Black History Month. Mind your business. Okay. Here we go. So while reading this book, I kept laughing because I felt that there were certain parts of this book, if not a lot of this book, that I felt like if you black, you know, right? You. If you identify with the culture, you know. There was no way for you not to know. So I wanted to talk about some of the things. There was one part of the book where a character was like, let me go ahead and get your kitchen. And I was dying. So I'm just going to explain what that is for those of you who don't know. So kitchens is like, let me see if I can show you. You see those like little little curly hairs in the back there if you can I, I don't know if you can I'm not zooming in because that's just too much work but those are what's your kitchens that's like the curly hairs on the side of your hair um that just you know they just live there they live there 
So I remember being a young kid and you know, my mom saying, let me get them kitchens. Also when I was a kid, my mom wanted to focus on them when she permed my hair. But now I don't do the creamy crack, she don't do the creamy crack. We have stepped away from the hold of the creamy crack, amen? And we're done. The next thing is when um, Belle constantly, constantly kept telling her daughters like, y'all better act like y'all got some home training. And let me tell you about home training. It's essential. Those of you who don't believe in it, see, my, my plant is in shock. Same. Me too. How you don't believe in home training? You can't just be going out there at the any old kind of way. It also has to do a lot with me with morality, right? A lot of times I do think that home training in different black communities can be um, stemmed on like upholding white supremacy in a way or things that it seemed more like westernized in, in regards to beauty. But there are a lot of things that I've learned that you just, it just keeps you, keeps you whole, keeps you grounded, keeps you ten toes down. You get what I'm saying? Another thing is when there was a character, Grandma, who constantly was telling one of the POVs that she has to stay out the sun. And the reason why I thought this was another Black AF moment, because there are people within black communities who wants to uphold light skinness right and they're like hey don't be in the sun you're gonna get darker and people gonna come for you and it's not even just like a black thing i see it happen in cultures in india i see it in indigenous cultures i see it in you know latine cultures there's just so many cultures of brownness i'd be like look y'all don't need to be this dark stay out the sun so you don't get dark but that is also built on anti-blackness we know it but it was one of those moments that i was like yep i've definitely heard this before definitely heard this before is it toxic yes is it unhelpful yes is it forcing young folks to start disliking their skin or having a hate for how they were born Yes, I will be lying to you if I said that there wasn't a moment in my youth where I was like, damn, I wish I was light-skinned as my eldest sister. Because everyone compared me to her. Like, oh, she's the beautiful one and I'm just top liver. When we all know, your girl is not. But at that time, I definitely thought that. And it didn't help that I also had a light-skinned friend and people would compare us also in friend groups. So I'm just saying it's toxic. Let's let that don't sit in a dark shit die here in 2022. Rest in peace. Not even rest in peace. Rest period another thing i saw is like this notion or read was this notion of like black people don't do that which i felt in my spirit y'all know that i don't like cats um and that's just where it's at but it's just like the phenomenon of you know non-black folks out here letting their pets eat with them on the same plate or um i don't know lick in the mouth like it's just it's not giving, you know what I mean? I remember the great prophet Kev on stage said that his dog knows that his dog is black because his dog responds to eh eh, which means like we ain't doing that over here. You black, you black, we not doing that. So just hearing those themes constantly being repeated in the book kind of felt like, hmm, just a little bit of home because I was like, yes, that is what we're not gonna do. We're not, we're, we're not doing that. It's not okay. Another part is there are a couple characters from generation to generation that have the gift of sight. And what I mean by that for those who are not familiar of that is that they're able to dream things and see them. 
I remember my father telling me that one of my grandmas had that. It's like she would dream something and then it will be like what it is. And sometimes I feel like I have a little bit of that too, especially when it comes to people who are close to me. I will dream something and then something like that adjacent would like happen. And this is not this doesn't happen often, y'all. Don't don't get your your panties in a bundle, but it does happen sometimes and when these characters was like you know take my vision seriously i enjoyed how the other black people in the family took their vision seriously like yeah you know when that person dreams it it's probably going to happen and you know we might want to be careful or readjust how we move you know Another thing was, I remember in the book, Belle told Aisley, who was her youngest daughter, she was like, don't embarrass me in front of these white folks. The amount of time my mother has said that to me. Y'all, it's embarrassing. The amount of time Sheila, my mother, have told me don't embarrass her in front of these white folks. If I had a dollar, I would be rich. Just monies just raining down on me like a Tide commercial. Another thing I thought was interesting was Belle's interaction with the white woman. I just felt like that was another just black AF moment when the white woman will try to pretend that racism doesn't exist or race doesn't matter and Belle like inner dialogue or things she actually said to her. I was like, girl, same. I do it all the time or even like the look child if you like it i love it if you like it i love it that's that's what they say i guess that's what they say another term was getting fresh which i think is an antiquated term in black communities specifically southern black communities because i remember my like grandmother in the south telling me like don't be out here with them boys getting fresh which means don't be out here humping them and don't let them hump you because you're not going to come in my house with these babies. I'm not raising your babies. And I was like, getting fresh? What do fresh come from? I don't know. Do any of y'all know why it's called getting fresh? I have no idea why it's called getting fresh, but I got accused of it. I'm like, I'm just trying to, you know, play house. But not play house. You know? Another thing which is like real, real, real is when one of the characters says black folks don't leave their house after dark in the country and that is on period. That's another black AF moment because it's like, no, people are out here dangerous. You got to be careful. I live in the country. If you think I'm going to walk out and this is 2022, if you think I'm going to walk out my house. You think I'm going to walk out my house in the dark? Child, I, no, under no circumstances. They doing too much in these areas. What? I uh, know. You're not going, I'm not going to be on no milk carton. You're not going to have you seen me, me. No, uh-uh. No, I can't, I can't do it. And the thing is, you never know. I could easily be one of those people. I'm trying to minimalize the amount of times that someone could take me. And that's a real thing that I don't think people uh, and non-black people think about when they are interacting with, you know, black folks and specifically black women. It's like, no, we are not doing that. And black trans women, we are not doing black women X. We are not doing that. That is dangerous. Walking outside at night, whether you're in the country or not, that is a recipe for disaster. Like, I just can't do it. And there's sometimes you really can't even avoid it. Like, there's no other choice. Maybe you're somewhere and you don't feel safe. I've been in those situations where I'm somewhere and I don't feel safe and I don't have the money for a lift or don't have the money for a taxi and don't have access to someone to put me in a car and take me somewhere. And not saying that all cars are safe because we know what happened with Lyft and Uber and all those things. But it's just like... I'm constantly worried and hypervigilant about my safety as a black woman. Constantly. It never leaves my mind. And it's just like, 
it's just not happening like on my door right now i have like a little little lock like no we are not playing those games i can't um if you want to call me scary <laughs> where i'm scaryana okay scaryana in these streets let let that let that be me the poster girl amen so there is my favorite character in this story uncle ruth and let me tell you you're gonna fall in love with him he is probably the best part of this book and i know that is a huge statement to say but he is fantastic he's just one of the best parts of this book and i love how much he understand and recognize his privilege of being a white passing black person there's a section in the book i believe it's him i hope I hope I'm not talking about another character and that's going to be embarrassing. And if y'all got to call me out, call me out. It just have to be said. And I cannot go through. I'm not going through 800 and some pages to kind of figure it out. But I should have wrote more notes when I was writing down these moments. But there is a part in the book, let's just say a black man. I think it's Uncle Ruth though. And he is teaching this class. And he's talking about um the love of black women and let me tell you accolades accolades all of them flowers 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 chocolates 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 it was giving it was giving and i was like wow this is beautiful uncle ruth was talking about w.e.b du bois and his wife and how they lost a son right and how no one really gives the credit to the black women who are standing next to these men these black men in history and he was even talking about like martin luther king he was talking about several different like um activists black men who are activists around this time if not you know further back in history and was talking about how the black women are being lost and how we need to you know praise those black women and recognize the sacrifices that they did on behalf of their husbands and like what it meant to them all these different things it was so beautifully said and beautifully done i cannot even reproduce it if i can i wish that i was actually reading that part of the book i actually was listening to it and it was phenomenal it was everything phenomenal it was giving i had nothing else to say i almost cried because it was just beautifully written shout out to honoree for writing that because it was it was everything the characters or some of the male characters that are attached to the women in this family every time they said woman i kept thinking about you ever tell me that you are not speaking to me for a week again i will drop you like a bad habit with <laughs> and every time i heard it i was just like love it when you take charge daddy. Like, there are some people who you know be like yes call me woman i'm wamiana you know and there's some people who get offended by it but i also found it as like a term of endearment so i was like look at y'all and another black af moment was being in a position that currently i am which is i'm a person a black woman i should say who have degrees and being in higher education or in those higher education um, institutions and being accused of being there based on affirmative action still happens to this day and you're watching some of the characters navigate those white spaces those spaces that were in fact not made with them in mind and being accused of stealing a spot from a you know it's just show up as themselves every day and it's just is what it is it's unfortunate it's unfortunate and you just you you play this dance of like do i bite my tongue or do i choose violence do i bite my tongue or do i choose violence is the violence gonna end me no longer living is my mama gonna have to attend funeral services it's just like this back and forth that i doubt that even think about when they choose violence they just out out here choosing violence 
And I hate that I have to do this, you know. I saw people on TikTok, you know, being like, you know, I want to talk about people. And I'm like, not the planter, you know. So it's just, it's just too much. It's too much, but I understand that algorithms are, are real. And people are out here, you know, just really not wanting you to speak your truth. So I just want to say thank y'all for watching me talk about the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois, specifically the Black AF moments. And if you read this book, what are some other Black AF moments that you thought, and I'm talking about Black folks, and then also what are some moments of the book that you enjoyed? If not, what are some moments that you are most intrigued about that I've talked about today? And if you're going to read this book, let me know if you will. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later. Bye. Author is saying bye to y'all.